The Florida Gators need to figure out what their rotation will look like at two of the non-premium but still important positions for this week. You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Gators, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day every day. We are available daily and free reviews in the podcast and on YouTube. Happy Wednesday. I am Brandon Olson. Find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work with New York Giants on SI.com. Today's episode of Locked On Gators is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. And the Florida Gators right now, again, they don't release a depth chart anymore. However, we have gotten some information within the past 24 hours that is going to change the rotation for a very specific position that will need to be relied on heavily this weekend, running backs. Um, uh, Trayon Webb, after being listed as questionable, okay, I, I need to talk about the Trayon Webb thing for a second. When Trayon Webb got injured, I was told and I relayed that it was a knee injury that was keeping him out for four to six weeks. As we approach the end of that now, earlier this week, it was, hey, Trayon Webb getting surgery um, for a broken bone and that he, I'm I'm assuming going to be out for the season. I, I don't think he's coming back from that, but broken bone. Um, also Trey on, uh, also Trey Wilson is out for the remainder of the year. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Um, but Trey on web is out. Montreal Johnson last week was a game time decision dressed to play. I ended up not playing. And again, I talked about this yesterday. Montreal Johnson being dressed to play did not mean he was good to go. It meant, Hey, might be good to go. We're going to put him in camp and and see how he plays and see how he feels there. And that's going to be the deciding factor in does he play or not? Obviously, ended up not being able to play. That being said, I typically take the approach and we will get the injury report available tonight and see what Montreal Johnson's status is. But the way that I approach things is typically... If a guy is listed as a game time decision, I just assume that they're going to be available to play in the next game because from my thought process of if from Friday or Saturday before the game, you go, hey, he might be good to go at game time, then I typically think, well, in another seven days, I'm assuming he's going to be able to go. Again, things can change depending on, you know, I, I don't know if it's re-aggravated, whatever it may be. So things can change. But I am, until we get that injury report, assuming Montreal Johnson is going to be available to play. I have said that before. I said it last week, too, because last week, Jacoby Jackson was the first running back on the field. Um, and even though Jaden Boss saw more touches, saw more snaps, I don't care who starts at running back. Like, as in, I don't care who the first running back on the field is. I look at it as who plays more and who gets the ball more. That's it. I I don't care that Jacoby Jackson took the first snaps at running back for Florida last week. That means nothing to me. Because when we look at who played more, it was Jaden Ball. And so that's why I don't care. Like Jaden Ball played more. Jaden Ball ran the ball more. I don't care who saw the first snaps. So that's how I feel about this running back rotation right now is that the combination will need to be Montrell and Jaden Ball at the top, Jacoby Jackson behind them. I, I don't care who's on the field first. And if it were up to me, I think right now I'd play Jaden Ball more than anything else. But again, like Montrell could have maybe been good to go last week. I, I highly doubt that was the case, but could have maybe been good to go. And they're like, you know what? Keep him fresh. Texas next week. We'll take the approach there, especially when we feel pretty good about the depth we have. I think that the top of the room needs to be Montreal and Jaden Ball, then Jacoby Jackson behind him. I think that Jaden Ball has looked very good. Like, I don't know. The kid can run the football. 
Like that's it's as simple as that. He can run the football. And Jacoby Jackson, not bad at all either. Okay, I want to want to make that one clear as well. Um, I don't think that Jacoby Jackson is as versatile, I'll say, as Jaden Ball. But I mean, hey, still had a couple good runs against Georgia. I think that's the thing where people look at, oh, Jacoby Jackson had more yards on less touches. And it's like, yeah, well, chunk of those came on one or two carries. Um, whereas Jaden Ball, which I've said before, is more of the consistently going to pick up yardage. That's what I talk about with Jaden Ball. So I think Montreal, Jaden Ball at the top, Jacoby Jackson behind them. Good running back rotation that you have, especially, and, and not just for this week, for the remainder of the season, because again, Tryon Webb, nothing official. I'm assuming he's out for the season. We'll probably get some kind of confirmation or some kind of uh, information about that today. Then, like I mentioned at the start of the show, to not valuable, but still important positions, the linebacker room. Florida Gators linebackers have been really freaking good this year, which incredible. Uh, they've they, honestly they've just been they've played really well this year. The linebackers have been really good. Pop Howard had a few, we'll say, slip ups um, against Georgia. Shamar James, not a good coverage rep against Georgia. Uh, I forget the name of the running back, but and also. Covering an angle route from a running back out of the backfield is maybe the most difficult thing that you can ask a line a linebacker to do. Because especially when you like when you're playing straight up man coverage, which Florida, if I'm not mistaken, was playing cover one at that point. Um, and you, you're a linebacker and you're like, all right, I'm just watching the running back come at me. Whichever way he's he's going, I gotta be able to react and cover it, and that's really tough to do. It's tough to cover an angle route because they can go anywhere. You, I feel like you kind of have to just guess. Like I, f- I feel like you have to guess what they're going to do. And so I think coverage was an issue for the linebackers last week. I do think that coverage might be an issue this week as well with Gunnar Helm at Texas, uh, the most productive tight end in college football at a consistent level, at a high level. Paul Howard, Shamar James, Jaden Robinson, Miles Graham should be the four linebackers that play the most snaps. Okay. Um, I do think that, and by the way, Miles Graham did that against Georgia. Just want to throw that out there. Like Miles Graham was linebacker four against Georgia. Need to see more of that. Okay. Uh, Miles Graham has looked really good. I know people are going to mention uh, Aaron Childs. He's, he's playing more of the edge right now. So that's irrelevant. But I think that when we look at Miles Graham, who didn't play much through the first six, seven games of the season, played really well against Georgia in the limited snaps. He played like 15, 20 snaps, but looked really good in those snaps. And I think he looked really good as a blitzer. We saw he sacked Carson Beck. He was one of Florida's few sacks in that game. I think he looked really good as a blitzer, and that was something he was always good at. You can go back to the John Garcia days as our recruiting insider. Now we've got Brian Smith as our recruiting insider. And you can go back to what does Miles Graham do well as a linebacker? And it's blitz. He used to play running. He's got insane athleticism, insane burst. He's going to be really good as an off-ball blitzer. That 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 Gerard Davis type of, of insane first step, explosive athlete, just dip downhill and hit people. And Miles Graham looked really good as a blitzer against Georgia. I do think that he kind of opens up your offense a little, or opens up your defense a little bit in terms of your your blitz plan. Always a welcome addition. I think he was acceptable in coverage. Give him more reps. Simple as that. That's all. I'm not saying start him. I'm not saying you have to start Jaden Robinson. I'm not saying you got to do that. I'm saying your linebacker rotation should be four deep. Pop and Shamar, Jaden and Miles Graham. And that is the ideal linebacker situation for the Florida Gators for the remainder of the season. We're about to be joined by Hayden Hansen, Florida Gators starting tight end, next on Locked On Gators. Guys, you ever feel like you need a little boost in the bedroom? It's time you stop worrying about your performance and get him so you can feel confident knowing that you can be ready to go whenever your number is called. That's the analogy that we're going to use. You can be ready to go whenever your number is called. Okay, you go to Hims. Hims is changing men's health care by providing you with access to affordable sexual health treatments from the comfort of your couch. 
also not just sexual health treatment. You can get if, if you've got thinning hair and you're worried about that. They got a lot there. With hundreds of thousands of trusted subscribers, Hims can help you find any option that works for you. So start your free online visit today at hymns.com slash locked on. That's hymns.com slash locked on. The products mentioned are chewable compounded products, which are not approved by or verified for safety or effectiveness by the FDA. Prescriptions require an online consul consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate. Restrictions do apply. See website for details and important safety information. A subscription is required. Prices vary based on product and your subscription plan. You can get ready to tackle the NFL with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets. If you win, the FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. Something I like to do for primetime games, you don't have to do this, it's just something I do, is if we're watching, I'm just going to name two, Rams Chiefs. If the Rams and the Chiefs are playing in primetime football, you know what I'm doing? I am setting Rams, player to catch a pass this drive. Cooper Cup or Puka Nakua, whichever one I'm feeling. And then I am setting Chiefs, player to catch this drive. Travis Kelsey, or player to record to catch this drive. And then I parlay him. I also bet them single, but I parlay him. And a lot of times, early in game, I do it for the first four drives-ish. A lot of times, early in games, there's cash. So I'm just saying, you can get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet at FanDuel.com. Joining me now for Locked On Gators is Hayden Hansen, Florida Gators starting tight end. And, I mean, injury bug strikes again. You guys were leading the Georgia Bulldogs prior to DJ Lagway getting hurt. Uh, later on in the game with Aiden Warner at quarterback, you guys tied it up with under five minutes left. In, in a game where, by the way, many people thought that it was going to get really out of hand once uh, once Aiden came in, or more appropriately, once DJ got hurt. Walk me through that Georgia game. Yeah, I mean, it was we just had a specific mindset walking into that game, you know, that we could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys. Um, we proved it to ourselves um, weeks prior, walked in there, chip on our shoulder, knew how last year went against them. Um, and we were rolling, man. And um, obviously seeing DJ go down was a little punch in the face. Um, and then immediately we shifted to Aiden. We're like, all right, we got to rally around him. We got to raise our play. And uh, we, we, we fought our butts off for him and uh, just came up a little short at the end. But uh, I, like I said, I, I had a meeting the other day. I have huge respect for the guy. I mean, I mean, it can't, I mean, a true freshman, not even on scholarship, you know, I guess thrown in on the Florida Georgia game, you know, and he didn't crack. So, yeah, um, uh, we, we do have to revisit something from, from media availability because there was a tweet from Nick. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I think it's Marcinko. Um, But that said, and the quote is, Hayden Hansen says he's been here for three years, and this is the first year they believe they can go out and win versus Georgia. And I, I'm not trying to be the type of person that's just like going to take up for anybody, but I mean, you've been on this show for three years now or three seasons now. And I think you've been as we can beat anybody uh, as I think most people have seen from a player every week. There's the comments when you go, Hey, like we just, you know, we got to win out um, every week. There's the comments about you saying that and, and being that bought in and all that stuff. So I will ask you to, I guess, just further elaborate on that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it was taken a little bit out of context. I mean, I know how it sounds, but if you go and listen to the whole interview I had, it's about 11 minutes long, about three minutes in. I was I was touching on, like, the team, like, as a whole, like, the vibe, you know, in the locker room. It just felt different. Like, it felt like the mindset that we, we had pre preparing. There was, like, no doubt in anyone's mind. I mean, you know, like, individually, you can always believe. Like, I think I can go in that field and hang with anybody anytime. It doesn't matter. But you like there's different feels, you know, like this team has a different feel to it. You know, it just gives, makes you even more confident. And I think that's what I was trying to get at is, I mean, just the chemistry we have together. I, like we don't fear anybody. There's no doubt. We don't listen to the outside noise. Last year, I mean, it was obvious that the outside noise got to some guys on the team. Um, just what they said on social media and stuff like that. But we haven't had one guy do that this year. We haven't had one guy point the finger. If anything, they point the finger at themselves. And that's what I was trying to get at. I mean, this was like this was just the first year where we knew we could go in there and beat them at, at all phases of the game. Yeah, I, I think 
because that was one thing when I read it too, I immediately read it and I was like, oh, that's going to be taken the wrong way. Mm. But I do think that you can tell that there's a, a, a difference there. Like when I read it, I was like, okay, people are going to take that as, you know, we, we, we haven't previously believed in, in ourselves or whatever it may be, but I do feel like you could just watch the team this year and say, Hey, this team is obviously way more bought in than previous years. And this seems way more confident than previous years. So while reading it, I was like, Oh, that's going to be taken the wrong way. I feel like for people who were in the know, you, you kind of knew that that wasn't that the way it reads, isn't the way it was intended. If that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely could have worded it a little better, but that's definitely what I was trying to say. I mean, obviously the past two, two years, different teams I've been on, we went in there thinking we were going to win. You know, we didn't, we never, we didn't go in there thinking like, Oh, let's just go out there and, you know, go through the motions. I was just trying to get at just like the vibes different, the confidence levels through the roofs. I and mean, you can be confident every year and be like, we're going to win. But like we went in the Georgia game knowing we, we, we were going to win, you know, I and mean, that's just a little, the little different stuff with this team. That I was trying to get at. Yeah. I also think that, I don't know. I was thinking of it either that way, or also that this is the first time where the final minutes of the game, it was genuinely, you had a decent shot at it. Tied up with four minutes left. Tied up with four minutes, man. It just comes down to those um, crucial possessions. We just came up short again. We've got to figure out a way to finish. I mean, it get, I know for the fans, it gets repetitive. We come up like game, game every now and then. We come up with the, the top team in the nation. Just can't finish. We we're there every time. We prove we can hang with them. We just have to finish. We got to find a way to do it. Yeah, and I, I need to know what the team mentality and, and the locker room was like at halftime because of course in the second quarter dj lagway gets hurt aiden warner comes in and it felt like when dj got hurt it was weird it felt like the air got taken out of the stadium a little bit but at the same time the florida fans were, were chanting for dj so it's like oh like they were clearly going around dj but also like once once he got off the field and Aiden Warner was in there. I feel like the air kind of got taken out, but you guys were still leading at, at, at halftime despite still playing. I mean, I guess the second half of the second quarter without DJ. So I need to know what that locker room was like where it was 10, three, if I'm not mistaken, 10, six, and you guys were leading over Georgia. Yeah. I mean, no one was surprised. That was the big message. I mean, guys like Piver, Cam Jackson, um, some offensive guys were just like, we're not surprised, you know, um, and some of the defensive guys came over there, um, talking to Aiden, like, we got you, man. We're going to keep, we're going to keep them off the scoreboard. We're going to, you know, just all this together. I mean, and no one was like overly like, like celebrating, you know, I, like I said, that goes back to my original statement. that got taken out of context. We went into that game knowing what we could do against that team, knowing we had the firepower to go to battle with that team. And it showed, it showed the whole game until those last couple of possessions, you know, and that's where you just got to keep improving on. Um, obviously we were put in an um, unforeseen situation. Obviously you never expect that to happen. Um, but it, it did. It's the next man up. There's no excuses. Um, and we just got to be better. Z-Biotics pre-alcohol probiotic drink is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. So here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct not dehydration. That's to blame for your rough next day. Pre-alcohol produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. Just remember to make Z-Biotic your first drink of the night. Drink responsibly and you'll feel your best tomorrow. So you drink your pre-alcohol, then you drink responsibly and you drink water. Please stop drinking without drinking water. It's just dumb. And then you enjoy it tomorrow. Go to zbiotics.com slash locked on college to learn more and get 15% off your first order when you use locked on college at checkout. Zbiotics is back with a 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money. No questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college at checkout for 15% off. And Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. I love Game Time. I get like a notification every now and then when there's artists that I listen to and they're like, hey, performing near you if you want to check it out. Um, Big X The Plug is performing tomorrow, actually, near me. And then December 13th, Shibuzi is performing. Um, 
considering going to see Shibuzi a second time, considering going to see Big X the Plug tomorrow night. I do it not far from my house. Got to be a good show. Just wasn't a huge fan of his most recent concert, so or his most recent album. So mm, we'll see. Thank you guys for going to buying tickets at Game Time Picks. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. You should locked on college for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again. Create an account redeem code locked on college for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? It's game time. And, and I do need to also say to you that I know you play offense, but it was very refreshing with, um, I guess we'll say with the defense keeping the energy with uh, Trevor Etienne until he exited the game, but that was. I think a lot of Florida Gators fans, despite how anybody may feel about Billy Napier or the remainder of this coaching staff or the rest of this coaching staff, I think a lot of Florida Gators fans were kind of like, all right, I, I rock with it with Caleb Banks taking his his pacifier, uh, Cam Jackson getting family texts after uh, after the game. I, I, I have to say I really appreciate the energy that was kept there with Trevor Etienne after, of course, leaving to go to the rifle. That was brutal. Yeah, man. I mean, this 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 defense is passionate of ours now. They're passionate. Yeah, and and Piper is just a sicko. There's just, there's just no other way to describe him. Yeah. Um, but I, I do have to I have to ask you how how hard are you campaigning to to get reps at quarterback here? Because I will I will tell you that I I go live after every game, and in the chat there were multiple people during that that were just like. Hayden used to play quarterback in high school is all I'm saying. So I, I got to know how hard you're campaigning for that one. Yeah, I mean, that came up also in my media. You know, I can see myself being the emergency QB3, you know, just knock the cobwebs off and we're going to let it go, you know. I got about – I got a 50-yard cannon in me, you know. Myzel's down there somewhere. Just throw it, throw it down there, you know. <laughs> I, I'm, F it. Tank, Myzel, Badger. Someone is down there somewhere. We have the speed and I have the arm, so let's do it. That's all you need sometimes, right? We've all played uh, college football 25 at this point. We, we know what it takes when, you, when you're recruiting a guy. It's like, hey, as long as you got the throw power, it's fine. Uh, but this coming weekend, it's your, I guess we'll say you get to head home. Homeish, three home, hours away. Home, homeish. You're, you're going to your home state of Texas. What does this game mean for you as you guys? Which, again, obviously would have been even cooler for everybody with you and DJ and a couple other kids from Texas going there but right now just for you what does this game mean for you to be able to go home play in the state of texas in front of i mean i'm assuming you're going to have family and friends there and because last time florida went to the state of texas was 2022 where you were of course red shirting and if i'm not did you travel that game at all okay so it didn't travel there so last time you went to texas or last time team went to texas you were not there what's this game mean for you to be able to go home yeah, it means everything, man. And I mean, at this point in my career, I don't know if this will be the only time I get to play in Texas, you know? So I'm going to take full advantage of it. You know, I'm going to go in there with a little chip on my shoulder. Um, I'm, I got about 55 tickets right now reserved for my people. So uh, it's going to be fun, man. And I'm going to leave it all. I mean, I always leave it all out there, but I'm going to leave a little extra out there, you know? Uh, it's it's going to be really fun. I mean, I've never been to that stadium, even though I'm from Texas. So I'm excited to experience it. You know, I was always, I mean, I was from Fort Worth. So I was always a TCU guy, but. Um, I'll be I'll be really excited for this. Your parents excited. This seems like something that from the limited conversations with your parents, it seems like something that they'd be really excited about. Yeah, they are. They're ecstatic. Sister being there? She's not. She's not gonna be able to make it. I thought she was a couple days ago, but um, they're I can't remember. She they're, she played volleyball for Clemson. They're playing somewhere. I can't remember. Okay, and uh, for those of you listening or watching, I need you to know that Hayden's entire family just giants. Um, sure. At, I, I am 5'11", and when I go near them, I'm just like, all right, I can't be near you guys too long. I feel I feel like a child next to them. Uh, so so that is strong genes there. But shifting to on-field, what does it mean for you guys as a team to have Aiden Warner now with all the QB injuries? And then can you give me a little insight into how he's handled prep so far? I know it's still early in the week, but how he's handled prep so far as QB1. Yeah, I mean, like I said, he's approached it about the same way as when he was QB3 or whatever he was, you know. Um, nothing's changed for him. Obviously, the workload, the expectations have changed for him, and I feel like he attacked that well today at practice. <coughs> but um, overall, I mean, we, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's our responsibility to raise our level of play for him, you know. He, um, 
I think, yeah, I mean, I don't know why I was thinking about it, but he definitely is the guy with the least amount of snaps on our offense, you know, so it's our responsibility to play better for him until he gets comfortable, you know, so. Yeah, and and you mentioning that he is the guy with the least amount of snaps in the offense, I, I do have to ask you, if, if possible, if you can give us, I guess we'll say a little bit of a scouting report for him, because there is such limited film available on him. Yeah, I mean, he's just a good. He's a, he's a great quarterback. You know, he's an accurate passer. He's uh, very intelligent. Communicates well. Uses his feet when he needs to. You know, checks all the boxes. I'm um, just. I'm excited. I mean, just seeing his growth this year. I mean, this kid's a true freshman. You know, um, I mean, he's. I can't wait to see him. He might be a completely different quarterback than what you saw against Georgia. I mean, it's just you never know when guys are still developing. You never know when they're going to just flip that switch and get, uh, take off. So. Yeah. Um. I I gotta say I felt bad for him a little. A little not felt bad for him really, but like. Just being thrust into Georgia, it's just like, oh man, that's not. I know they're not what they used to be, but man, that's a that's a brutal game to kind of be not expecting to to play and and get thrown into. But I'm also curious what the team's mentality is. I guess we'll say right now is because there's not only been quarterback injuries. I know that we've talked about Graham Mertz, we've talked about DJ Lagway, but I mean across the whole roster, we've learned in, in the past 24 hours, we've learned hey, Trayon Webb getting surgery. Uh, Trey Wilson surgery out for the year, just just a brutal stretch. And then against Georgia itself, there was one drive where you guys had three defenders go down, all all DBs. It, it, it's just brutal. So as you guys have to head on the road to a hostile environment, last time the team leaves the state because uh, you got two home games after this, and then to Tallahassee. Just just what is the team mentality right now? As just so many injuries have seemingly piled up after being relatively healthy for most of the season. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, this, the mentality is right now you got to bank sleep because you're not going to get it back, you know, go to bed these next three days. Cause you get on that plane, it's a quick turnaround. Um, and, other, and the other, the other two is next man up, you know, you came here for a reason. Maybe it's sooner than you thought. Maybe it's later than you thought, but Hey, your chance is here. You go do it. And the second, the third one is I'm sure you've heard it before. Just spot the ball. We're going to go down there and spot the ball. We're going to tape what we learned against Georgia, carry it over to Texas, and we're going to finish this time. So, And as, obviously, different quarterbacks you guys have had throughout the entire season now, I know that Billy Napier has said, hey, DJ Lightway might be ready to go this week. Regardless of that, let's just, assuming, I am assuming, Aiden Warner is going to be a starting quarterback this week. How tough is it to kind of, I, I guess, prepare with, quarterbacks with such different skill sets with such little turnaround because you guys of course prepared with both Graham and DJ and then Graham got hurt and it was like hey we're only preparing for DJ to be QB1 full time now and then DJ gets banged up and now it's hey we're preparing with Aiden Warner right now so just just how tough is that as as a unit to just go out there and, and spend every week or or spend this week with a different quarterback at the helm yeah, I mean, it, it takes some time to adjust for sure, but that's what Mondays and Tuesdays are for, you know. We're um, learning the playbook. There's always new wrinkles every week anyways, you know, so we'll just – we'll we'll play it by ear, um, but we'll be ready for sure. And hopefully this weekend, the wrinkle, six, seven quarterback, six, eight quarterback, depending on where you look. I'm just saying we could see a little bit of that, but – um, and, and, and I will say usually we end with a non-football question – Lately, we've been ending with football adjacent questions. We're going to continue to do that. If you score this weekend, any chance that we're going to get a horns down? Probably not because I think it's a flag. I don't know if it is or not, but uh, Napier would not be happy about that one. So uh, I, I think I'll choose life. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's fair. I respect that one. Um, I will still hope that we sell. I'll, I'm not going to lie to you. I'll hope that heat of the moment, you're just like, you know what, bang. <laughs> but I'll, I'll take it if you don't. As, as hopefully there's a win there. But thank you so much, Hayden. This is Hayden Hanson, Florida Gators studying tight end. Catch him every week with Locked On Gators and every Saturday for your Florida Gators. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day. Every day we are available daily and free. We have this in the podcast and on YouTube. We'll be back tomorrow. Talk more Florida Gators football with Jonathan Davis of Locked On Longhorns. That's right. We didn't have anybody duck us when it comes time to doing a crossover this week. Who'd have thought? For Lockdown Gators, I'm Brandon Olson. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work with New York Giants on SI, and I'll see you all next time.